Welcome to this webinar which provides insights into transitions with a focus on early years practitioners. These insights take account of research and are drawn from inspectors' findings in early learning and care settings, as well as the guidance provided by inspectors to settings to promote improvement. For many children, transitions may be a very positive experience and a time of joyful celebration. The children that are returning to your setting will respond really well to the familiar faces and the caring environment that they have known. However, for others, separation from parents or caregivers may be more difficult. The quality framework for early years education inspections highlights that high quality relationships are nurtured through secure interactions and the implementation of an effective key person approach positively contributes to this. As many of you know, children and their families really benefit from having a designated key person to liaise with on a daily basis. This supports the establishment of responsive, sensitive and reciprocal relationships, which are essential to the development of a child's well-being and their identity and belonging in the early learning and care setting. The early years education environment will also have a vital role to play when supporting the children's transitions. Planning for inviting, well-resourced spaces that children can identify with will support their learning and development. Inspectors have noted that having well-defined areas of play supports the children's engagement and participation which in turn creates opportunities for them to make new friends and to feel a sense of belonging in the early learning and care setting. The Astro Shield to Practice Guide has many practical tips on planning a learning environment that is well organised to promote the children's individual needs, interests and holistic development. Inspectors note that many early learning and care settings are using a wide variety of methods to promote ongoing communication with families. This process of communication begins upon registration of the child and many settings provide open days, information evenings and meetings with parents throughout the year to ensure that ongoing communication occurs. Communication during periods of transition is vital so that the children feel secure and that a plan is in place to provide continuity of care. The Early Years Education Inspection Framework identifies that best practice regarding transitions is when transitions into, within and from the early learning and care setting are managed effectively to support children's learning and development. We will now look at these varying transitions and provide some practical ideas on how you can support children through each stage. The first transition we will focus on is the transition a child makes when joining the early learning and care setting for the first time. Inspectors have noted that many settings have effective settling in and transition policies in place. Inspectors also note the many practical tips and steps that a setting can take to support children and families with this transition. For example, it is beneficial to provide practical and visual information to the parents and children prior to their transition into the setting. Innovative and informative handbooks can be created that showcase photographs of the early years practitioners and the indoor and outdoor learning environments. This information can be posted or emailed to the children and their family prior to the transition. Some settings host an open day and some settings develop an online virtual tour. When getting to know the children, it is important to obtain useful information which will support your understanding of the child's individual needs, temperament and interests. The key person approach is very beneficial in this regard, as it enables early years practitioners to adapt the environment and support planning for meaningful experiences for each child. You could get this information prior to the opening of the setting through face-to-face -face meetings where possible, or by making a phone or video call to the parents and children to discuss and complete the All About Me form. Of course, 
you will also need to consider how best to communicate with families for whom English is not their first language. These strategies will help you establish strong relationships between the key person, parents and the children as you collaborate to plan for and support the transition into the setting. When making contact with the parents, it would be useful to obtain family photographs to develop a familiar and inviting environment for the children in each of the rooms. Inspectors have found that some settings support the settling in phase by collaborating with the children to make personalised All About Me books, which subsequently remain in the library throughout the year. Additionally, it is positive to display children's art and photographs throughout the environment. Also, you could provide an identifiable space for their personal belongings. This will enhance their sense of identity and belonging. Furthermore, a visual daily routine will support the children to develop a sense of security along with enhancing their familiarity with the daily routine. We will now look at what early years practitioners can do to support the children who will be returning to the early learning and care setting from the home environment. So what are the practical steps you, the early years practitioners, can take to support children and their families who are returning to your early learning and care setting? You may develop a tip sheet for parents on how to support this particular transition. Transfer your ideas on how to support transitions from previous practice to a simple, functional tip sheet on what parents can do to support children in a sensitive, supportive and playful manner. This may be in written or audio form and might include information on how parents can prepare their child by talking to them about what to expect. These tips will be appropriate to the age and stage of each child's development and the literacy and first language of the parents will need to be considered. It is also advisable to provide a familiar learning environment to support the continuity of the children's learning experiences. Some settings have organised for the children to return to the same room with the same key person and participate in a similar routine. Others are supporting the children by sharing photographs and videos of their new learning environment electronically of the rooms, the outdoor area, the early years practitioners and the play materials. Inspectors note that many settings use social media and electronic messaging really well to communicate with parents. Inspectors frequently note the many ways in which early years practitioners connect with the children and their families on a daily basis. Inspectors highlight, for example, the informal conversations that drop off and pick up times, organised meetings and the sharing of the children's learning and development. It is possible also to use innovative approaches using technology to connect with the children and their families. This may include telephone calls or video calls to parents and the key children, sending postcards or letters to key children, or using Zoom meetings for group activities such as story time and games. Some early learning and care settings are using these mechanisms to talk to the families about the children's strengths and areas that are developing. They are sharing and in some instances jointly completing the records of learning and development that have been captured about the child. These may be Ashter learning stories and the children's individual learning journals and scrapbooks. The parents will love reviewing photographs and the children's artwork with their child. This will remind children of past playful experiences and support them to think about what they would like to do when they return to the early learning and care setting. Stories are a great way to share new information with children. A social story could provide a clear, accurate, sequential account of what returning to the early learning and care setting will be like through photographs of playful activities and the early years practitioners. This will hopefully ease any anxiety the children may be feeling about the unknown. Now we will take some time to consider how to support the children and their families who are leaving your early learning and care setting to begin primary school or attend alternative settings. 
that pictures, videos and stories can really help the children to develop an understanding of what going to their new school will be like. As an early years practitioner, you might like to share relevant social stories, video clips or photographs of the school with the children or encourage them to explore the early learning and care setting or the school's website and social media page. You might also like to encourage families to link in with other families who have children attending these relevant early learning and care settings or schools through calls, video links or vlogs of children talking about moving on to school. It is important to support the children to understand that their time in the early learning and care setting has come to an end and if possible to allow them to share this milestone with their peers. Inspectors note that many settings have an end of year celebration to mark the event and to affirm and recall the child's positive experiences in the setting. It is possible, of course, to have a virtual event also. With parental support, you could consider gathering videos of each child talking about their early years experiences and share them on the early learning and care setting social media platform as a virtual celebration. Some early years practitioners have prepared slideshows for the families showcasing group learning experiences. Share the children's learning journey in a sensitive and strength-based manner. We are reminded in the discussion around transitions in Ashter that children's experiences of transitions can be very positive when key people in their lives liaise to share important information and when they work in partnership with each other. Where possible, collaborate with the parents to talk about the children's interests, strengths and areas of skills that are developing and with consent discuss how best to share this information with the appropriate skills. Inspectors advised early learning and care settings to use the Moshkiel reporting template available at ncca.ie to support information sharing with the local schools. Of course, it is possible to complete this document by liaising with parents by phone, email and post. You can seek guidance from your assigned early years AIM specialist where the completion of an access and inclusion plan is relevant. Please take a few moments to read this extract from an inspection report which highlights some of the key elements of highly effective transitions practice. The extract highlights evidence of the following principles in action in this early learning and care setting. Early years practitioners engage in co-professional dialogue with the school on numerous occasions throughout the year, demonstrating the formation of many strong partnerships. The school aged children visit the early learning and care setting to speak to the preschool children about what primary school will be like. The preschool children visit the school to meet their teachers and explore the environment inside and outside. The preschool children are also invited to attend the school throughout the year for events such as Science Week, Sports Day and Christmas celebrations, which supports the development of resilience towards the transition to school. The principals and teachers have made photographic books, social stories and posters to depict the school staff and aspects of the building to the children. Opportunities are provided for two-way communication between the children and their new teachers. The preschool children have constructed interviews and questionnaires for their new teachers to enhance their knowledge and to satisfy their curiosity prior to the transition to school. Such effective engagement is establishing a growing collaboration in relation to Ashter as early years practitioners and teachers discuss how they can develop practices that build upon the children's experiences using playful pedagogies. The recent implementation of Moshkiel transition document further complement this and enhances strong partnerships between the early years practitioners, children, their families and the local schools. 
Here is a list of further information and resources which we think may support you, the children and their families through times of transition. This brings us to the close of this webinar and we would like to thank you for listening. We hope it provides helpful advice. If you have direct queries or comments arising from your engagement with this webinar, please use the dedicated email address provided to send your comments to us on insights underscore info at education.gov.ie. Mm -hmm.